Hey, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This is Praveen here. I hope you guys are extremely doing good. So in this video, I have brought my Airtel experience, how the interview was, how many rounds I had, how I have applied this position called SRE in Airtel and everything I'm going to reveal. And it will be the part of the playlist, which I have already created. The I button will be flashing on the screen where you will see my Amazon interview experience, SAP, Informatica, Paytm, Google, everything, right? So the like target for this video is 200 likes. And if I get the like target crossed on this video, I'll be bringing much more videos on my various company interview experience, right? So stay tuned. Now let's go into the video, right? Uh, so I have applied the Airtel position through the LinkedIn, right? And I was continuously applying over the LinkedIn job section, which again, everyone should be aware of how to use the LinkedIn, how to set the alerts, how to manage the alerts. And uh, in this video, I'll be sharing the questions along with the answers also. So stay tuned till the end of the video. So don't skip and do share the channel link with your friends. Now let's get started into the video. Now, because it is an SRE position, site reliability engineering position, where uh, the interviewer asked me many of the questions. Now coming on to the number of rounds, I had three rounds, right? The first round was technical, second round, little bit technical scripting, and the third round was obviously a managerial round and it was for a Gurgaon position. Now. I have taken some important questions out of the three rounds and I'll be telling those answers also. So stay tuned with me. So basically because this is an SRE position. So the first question, what I would like to tell you all was how the DNS works and how the dis if, if the DNS is working, can you design a DNS to me? So uh, in this DNS is an important factor. What is DNS? Basically DNS is a domain name server where it will have the mapping of all the IP addresses to its canonical names or you call it like your website names. Let's take I hit www.google.com. So obviously Google is an application which is deployed on a server and uh, basically on top of this server we map something called your certificates right now this server has the IP address and the certificate is like www.google.com and guys DNS is a server which is just in front of uh, some some pool of servers right and this DNS will be mapping the website name to the IP address of the server. So when someone asks, can you tell what is DNS, right? So you just tell them like DNS is just the name server where these server names will be mapped with the IP address and uh, one screenshot will be flashing on the screen. So you just see how the mappings are done. And when someone asks you, can you design a DNS for me? So being a DevOps engineer, I always ask you to prepare some of the things, see how the Java code works, how the database works. So see what happens, right? DNS is basically a database. Let's consider like that. So the interviewer is asking to create a database. Let's say, and I can tell him proudly that, okay, I will go into the Amazon. I will uh, create a DynamoDB and basically DynamoDB works like a key value pair. And I will have my uh, www.google.com mapped to an IP address, www.pravinsingampalli.com to map to an IP address. So similarly, all my IP addresses will be mapped to your uh, website names. So that's how the design I will do and scalable, reliable, everything AWS can manage. So that's how the thing works. What will happen? So let's go to the next question. What what will happen in backend if you give curl www.google.com so when you hit a website on a browser right it will directly take you to which place guys there is something like in every laptop desktop you will see an internet port connected to your desktop laptop which is giving you the internet right now internet plays an important role right and we call like internet service provider so just comment down like I think you guys will have Airtel as an internet service provider uh, at is there there are many other uh, service providers so comment down which one you are using right so because we are talking about Airtel company so I will go ahead with Airtel internet service provider so let's consider that this is your laptop and this is your Airtel internet service provider so when you hit www.google.com from your laptop automatically the request will be first sent to your internet service provider and because guys internet service provider is just providing the internet to us it will not give what is google.com this request will be sent to that nearby dns servers which are located geographically around your place now dns server will have again in the question one we discussed right 
the website names to map to your IP addresses. So from there, it will bring your mapping and it will give the particular IP address of the server and it will get the IP address to the internet service provider and internet service provider will again reroute that traffic to your google.com where you have hit it. Now because your www.google.com received the IP address, now there will be a caching mechanism which will be done uh, over your uh, particular regions and uh, that's how the mapping of the website flow to your IP address flow will happen. In this entire flow, again, the DNS plays an important role along with your internet service provider, along with your laptop. So that's how the things goes and it's a two-way communication. Basically, everything works on the secured socket layer SSL communication we call two-way handshake. You send a request, you get the data. You throw the request, you get some other data. So that's where you have to explain them all the concepts and SRE should know all these concepts and they expect the proper person to know all these things. So let's go to the next question. Write a shell script to check the folders and subfolders data and sort them by using the size. So basically I used the find command in the Linux where you tell find dot and uh, hyphen f you tell like file and uh, then uh, you grab it. But I got a simple term like one line command du hyphen h a pipe symbol sort hyphen h. What is du? Du is basically disk usage right disk usage of all the folders hyphen h h is basically human readable format the when you hit du hyphen h there will be a screenshot flashing on the screen which will tell you what are the things like human readable format in the sense it will be in the gbs and mbs right and the pipe symbol is basically whatever the data which is which you are getting in the first section is transferred to the second section and on that the sorting is done again in the human readable format so the data Data, du h will list down all the files data and again that files data will be sent to the second command where your sorting based on the file size will happen now there is one more question fourth what is top command and what are the three averages on top of that now when you hit a top command basically you will see on any Linux system you will see various type of things and in that he has asked me particularly what are the three average symbols or the values which are shown on the Linux terminal so you will see when you hit the top command there will be the memory and the swap along with that there will be CPU values shown on the screen so the memory will be your real-time hard disk memory and the swap memory is your virtual memory in the top command and coming on to the CPU values there will be three values which will be between 0 and 1 guys if you are in front of Linux system just hit top command and you will see at the right hand side right it will be like 0 0.2 0 0.35 0 0.5 these are like CPU load averages for last one minute. The first value will be the CPU load average for the first one minute. The next will be CPU load average for the last five minutes. And the next will be CPU load average for the last 15 minutes. And if you see the next question, how do you say that system is loaded by seeing this top values? So very simple guys, as I've told you, the values should be always between 0 and 1, right? If it is exceeding the 0 and 1 values, it means that your CPU is already loaded and you need to take steps as a DevOps and SRE guy. So that's how the things will work and they will make sure like you get confused here and there. So the question number six, very, very important question. And uh, you just see how the Docker container separate itself from the host guys. Very important. So have you imagine when you launch a container inside a Docker. So always the containers which are residing on the Docker always talks with the host machine, right? So that's where it extracts the data of the host machine. Now you need to understand and this host machine has certain limitations guys suppose you have a laptop of 4 GB and you run 10 containers each of uh, let's take 1 GB RAM but the six remaining containers are left right you have given four containers 4 GB of RAM but remaining how the data is distributed have you ever imagined about that so that's where he asked me the question and the answer is uh, C groups guys and C groups are like control groups in the Linux system and this control groups actually manages your memory distribution across your Linux systems. Now I will be showing you a screenshot which I found very much interesting. You will see C groups 
processes can use a lot of memory and uh, you see in the first box you will see I want 10 GB of memory some process is there which is asking the Linux system I want 10 GB of memory and the second process is telling I also want 10 GB of memory but Linux is telling hey guys I have only 16 GB of memory so how can Linux gives that much amount of memory to other systems other containers so you see now in the second box you will see C group is usually a form of process and uh, once C group comes into picture all the containers will use that C group itself and every container is happy now you see the C groups are limiting the memory and CPU utilization for the processes also right and the rest of the things you see uh, too much slowed down uh, the C group will control too much oh, out of memory uh, instance the C groups are managing that right so basically C groups are like distribution of resources with limitation on your uh, particular memory right memory and your uh, CPUs everything and it administers when I tell C groups C groups is like a layer on a Linux system which manages the uh, CPU and the memory utilization for each of the process and it limits like okay I have a docker I need to give only 10 GB of data and more than that it will not allow it will not give to those containers it will tell hey container you die as you are seeing on the screenshots now Question number seven, if the application response time is low, what you will do? So guys, this is very much important question and SRE is basically site reliability engineering. So response time is low. You need to make sure how one application dependency is having other applications. You need to backtrack that request. Suppose you hit www.pravinsingampalli.com. At that point of time, you see there is a lag in some browser connectivity is there or the server is not sending the data. Then first of all, you need to see from the browser itself, you hit F12, go to the network tab, you will see all the details, uh, whether it is taking time, whether the data has come or not, whether the server is responding, your 503 internal server error, 404 page not found. So all these key values you should remember. And if you feel that, okay, from my browser side, everything is good. You clear the cache, you refresh your sessions, everything, it is good. Then you go towards the, uh, you are towards your logs. Then you check the logs and you found that logs are also clear. Then the next step, immediate step is you, you go towards the, uh, the concept of route 53 from there, the request goes to the, or, uh, uh, what we call the, your web server, which can be your Tom, uh, which can be your Apache web server or Nginx web server, where you see again, the logs of those web servers. And if you still feel that everything is good, then you go and hit the actual web server where you check the logs, you do everything and make sure that your application is up and running. So basically we go towards the Grafana monitoring section. We see all the logs. We see last 15 minutes, how the application is behaving. We see database graphs, everything we will see. And basically we decide and prepare a root cause analysis, which we call in project terms. RCA. So that is very much important. So one more question and this will be the final question of our uh, ATEL interview questions. What are Linux signals? Uh, can you explain them? So guys, Linux signals are basically uh, whenever you see a process is running, you are killing that process. How you kill it? Kill hyphen nine, right? These are like code values, like uh, numbers, right? But in terms of the signals, Linux is very much beautiful in, in distinguishing different types of signals and every signal name starts with SIG. Now I will tell you some signal names. You see SIG INT, right? It means a signal when you give control C, when you are running up shell scripting, when you are running a Python script and you immediately give control C, what will happen? The process exits and come out. So it means you are terminating the program or process with a signal called SIG INT. Now SIG ALRM is generated when a timer is set and the function goes off. SIG ABRT, SIG abort, signal abort, abort signal is generated when a process executes the abort function. You would have seen uh, when the container is running uh, at the same time, there is an, there is a lack of memory, lack of CPU. It usually goes into the abort mode or some other et error it will throw, right? Now, SIG stop tells the signal to pause a process. So this signal is basically, it uh, Linux tells to a process to stop the signals, right? Stop continue SIG COND is basically uh, the process to resume the process paused earlier right and now you see 
S I G S E G V is a process sent when it has a segmentation fault and S I G kill as I have told you when you give kill hyphen nine same that value works S I G kill is a, is sent to a process to cause it to terminate so that's all things you will see on the screen this slide will be flashing on the screen so you will have to make sure like okay how these things work basically these are the Linux processes and signals where this signals the Linux sends to a process to make sure to kill it, to run it, to start it, to stop it, to pause it, right? So those kind of things. So I hope you have liked the videos, right? And uh, I hope you have liked this video also where I've shared my experience. If you need any other company experience which I have cracked, you would have seen that I have shared a set of interview questions in my I button, you will see. So from there, if you want anything to me discuss or any questions, you can comment down in the comment section. And uh, thank you for watching the complete video. I hope you have liked the video. Thank you. Let's meet in another video. This is Singham signing off.